This morning we're going to take a look at a uh, two-piece rear shaft. This is out of a Toyota Tundra. Uh, this is from my customer, uh, Layton's Garage. It's one of their customers. And it's a customer requested inspection. And the ask is, could the application of like epoxy paint cause this truck to vibrate? Or did it just drive into a vibration like a lot of vehicles do as time goes by? and the paint just happened to be a likely suspect. Uh, so fair enough, and I've seen both. It, both things can happen, and uh, maybe a combination of the two. So we're gonna just take a look. They requested me to inspect it, so we're gonna inspect it. So you can see, it's, it's like, you can see the discoloration of the color change there as it goes around. So obviously, there's a stripe of paint on this. So I'm gonna whack the throttle here and turn it up get it up into the zone. You can watch the dashboard. The majority of the action is down at the rear axle end and it's telescoping up. So you can see it spinning up. I'm going to get it up into the zone where it's pretty much the most prevalent. That's just a whisker over 2,000 RPM. Um, it's got a good flutter at the, this is the transmission end transfer case I imagine it's four wheel drive, I don't know. Um, that's the transmission end. Here's the center bearing right here. Same thing, there's more energy there as we move down. And, and down here at the rear axle, there's, there's definitely some energy there. Uh, although it's not like a jackhammer. I mean, I just kind of rake these things in my head as I'm doing it. Uh, it's more of a flutter. So anyways, I let's set the stage here. This is a two-piece shaft. It is 101 inches long. It is four inches in diameter all the way down. It is not small. It's over eight feet long out of a Toyota Tundra. I don't know how they fit that in a Tundra, but they did. Seems like it would be hanging out the back. But <laughs> um, the front section is steel, center bearing. So after the center bearing, it's aluminum. It has the large diameter glide coat multi-spline creation for that slip yoke is hiding inside of that accordion boot. Uh, they, there's no way to separate these pieces unless you take U-joints out. There's no flange that, that uh, you know, un, comes undone or no uh, yoke with U-bolts or bolt strap. So this thing is assembled. There's no signs of it being molested. I mean, it hasn't been hit with hammers and beat on. Uh, it, it looks like, other than the paint, it's original the way it was put in the truck when they built it. Uh, I did notice that this rear U-joint back here is articulates really, really difficultly. Difficult, you know, as you know, and I had it on the bench. And uh, the rest of them seem pretty good. We'll stop here. We'll look at the paint. This is a pretty even layer of paint. I mean, obviously, it didn't get painted here. But it's not like this is a quarter inch thick. I mean, it's... And this isn't really causing that much trouble. It's down here. This U-joint articulates really hard, as I said. And I have pre-ran this. You know, I set it up and gave it a good balance look. And the factory weight here is exactly at the bottom. And it's calling for weight here. That is not uncommon as vehicles age. It's almost like, well, it's not almost like. It is exactly like. And it's because drive shaft change change over time and um, components just they get stressed a little bit and the balance package changes so um, that guy there they call it the weight here now so that's a tell U joint is very difficult to articulate uh, that is a really good that's a spicer snap tight it is Toyota spec spicer snap tight with a grease fitting so it's a greasable snap tight but yet it is articulates really hard and trucks tend to kill the u-joint at the rear axle first anyways because that's the one that's down in the slop i have no idea what kind of mileage is on this truck uh, but that's what i'm seeing i'm gonna shoot this to the customer and they can look and we will discuss and that's uh, where we're at and we will correct it